Dr. Gandhi, thank you so much for joining us. And we're talking about some upbeat news here in the U.S. as it relates to COVID-19. Uh, you know, the numbers when it look when you look at the fully vaccinated Americans. I want to ask you this because I, I'm now fully vaccinated. I hit the two-week immunity period. Um, but how do you, should we think about going about our lives now that we are fully vaccinated? It, when I go outside, I don't know, should I keep my mask on? It's just kind of a, 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 a different territory to navigate now. How are you kind of thinking about that? Yeah, it's a strange time because it's sort of some of us are vaccinated, some of us are half vaccinated, some of us are fully vaccinated, and it's this kind of transition period. And so we have seen that a lot of people sort of making decisions for themselves, what they feel comfortable with. For example, um, outside transmission is very low, even regardless of vaccination status. There was probably the best study on this was from Wuhan, China, that um, one out of 7,324 cases in their very tightly contact tracing study was linked to outside transmission. So it's hard to get uh, COVID-19 outside. So the CDC did recommend that vaccinated people can be outside without a mask last week. Um, and even unvaccinated, likely, again, unless you're in a big crowd, it's really about outside transmission being low and not your vaccination status. In terms of um, inside activities, the CDC and everyone is thinking that you can be together with other vaccinated people inside, um, unmasked, undistanced. Now, more and more of us are going to be in that situation. But when you're in that in-between period, it's sort of what you feel comfortable with. Vaccines do block transmission um, to another person. Um, well, let's talk about people who might not be vaccinated. How quick is it when you're inside? How long do you have to be inside to have a serious potential for exposure that would make you ill? Well, the interesting thing, I mean, you know, you know, usually exposure is defined as 15 minutes next to someone who has COVID. The interesting and important thing to remember right now is our cases are dropping in the United States. We're at 32,000, which is actually the lowest it's been since the summer. And we're about a negative 27 percent decrease over the last 14 days. So your risk of getting COVID is not just your vaccination status but the risk of COVID in the community, cases in the community. And as those cases go down, even as an unvaccinated person, you're not gonna be standing next to someone who's likely to have COVID. We have 20 cases in the city of San Francisco, 896,000 people yesterday. Very hard for me to be around someone who has COVID. And, and I, I realize that the numbers are working in our favor now, but again, to this issue of being inside, does the virus live 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour in the air, or is it heavy enough to fall on its own to the ground? How long does it live? And it, does it stay airborne or does it fall? Well, there is still actually controversy around this, but this is the best way that I would say it as a simple way to think about it. Um, outside, it doesn't live well at all. It just can't stand the uh, air and the heat and the humidity. Inside, it will live longer and it will pass um, when you are next to someone in a closer place, especially if you're not masked. So think of indoor, unventilated, close settings as more dangerous. And 15 minutes is the sort of standard time that we think that it will live if you are standing next to someone who has COVID. So the way to think of that is if you're moving in and out, fine, you're not next to someone. But if you're close to someone for 15 minutes who has COVID, that is the time that it can live. And, and doctor, as we start to think about the reopenings, reopenings of businesses, offices, how should uh, companies or, or businesses start to think about this new phase that we'll be entering in? What are the kind of guidelines they might be, uh, they should be considering? You know, every company will be able probably in this kind of private setting to decide about vaccination status for their employees. So, for example, the way to think of it and then go by the CDC guidelines is vaccinated people don't have to be different around each other than they were in 2019. Vaccinated people can be around vaccinated people. It's when you get that mix of vaccinated and unvaccinated that their distancing and masking and ventilation needs to come into play. And so you can think of a company as deciding, here's a vaccinated section and an unvaccinated section. All my safety precautions over here and unvaccinated, vaccinated, I can be going back to where we are safe um, and we can be around each other. Or a company 
can and have decided at times to say everyone has to be vaccinated before we come back. So I think every company is going to decide differently. Testing will be done if someone is symptomatic and they've been vaccinated. That's the CDC guidelines. Don't test asymptomatic people if you've had an exposure, if you're vaccinated because you're so safe, but test if you're symptomatic after you've had an exposure and you're vaccinated.